Hello, hello, and welcome to Five Keys to Explosive Growth in Your Business. This is Sherry Kayhoff, and I am so happy you're here and get ready to take some notes because we've got some powerful ideas here for you to grow your business. So I'm Sherry K. Hoff. I've been coaching, mentoring, and training for 20 plus years. I've owned my own company, Your Path to Success, since 2007. I'm the host of the Living Joyfully Show podcast under Sherry K. Hoff, coach and author, syndicated throughout the world. I'm the author of six books, A Near Death Survivor, and my motto is, one of my mottos is relax into inspired action. So that's a little bit about me, and these are some of the places you can find me. You can find me on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and really any podcast um, player has my podcast available. So um, you can find me there, too. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and go to my website, sherrykhoff.com, and then contact So there's a contact tab, and there's also you can just do forward slash contact, and you can type in your question, and I will get back to you. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about five keys to explosive business growth, and this is true if you are just getting started or if you've run a business for 20 years. These five keys are transformational, and if you're doing them well, you're going to see explosive business growth. Okay, so the first is your transformation, which is your energy, your mindset, your environment, your spirituality. It's your own personal transformation, your vision, your intuition, your marketing, and that thing I like to call the magic sauce. So, I just want to back up a step here and tell you that I am a huge fan of making things as simple as they can be. So anytime I'm deciding I'm going to do something new, if I'm going to start a new program or go in a new direction with my business or my life, I always ask the question, how can I make this simple, easy, and more fun? And then also, how can I create a scalable business model? Because you want to get to the point in your business where you're not trading hours for dollars. And the way to do that, of course, is to scale. So let's talk about you. So when I think of you and I think of the things that impact you and the things that are the essence of you, there's your energy, your mindset, your environment. And when you take care of your energy, your mindset, and your environment, you are transforming your own life at a pretty high level. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to at least those three things. And you might say, well, we're talking about business growth, so why are you talking about me as an individual? Well, your business does not grow without you. You're the driver of your business, especially, you know, when you're in the six to seven figures, you probably don't have that person who could just take your business and run with it yet. And you probably don't have that business that you will sell to someone else yet. So you are the person who is the backbone of that business. And, yes, you want to build, you know, build or start building a great leadership team, a great um, group of people around you, a support team. But you need to take care of you. And I see so many business people who don't do that. They stop exercising. They don't eat right. They put in long hours and never seem that they ever – kind of leave the business. They're always, you know, in the business with their minds and their energy. So if you take really good care of your energy, your mindset, and your environment, you're going to protect and energize and transform your own life. Because if you're out there trying to motivate people and inspire people and they look at you and you're tired and worn out, no one wants to be that tired and worn out person. We want to have you know, a thriving life in our personal lives and our professional lives as well. So you want to be an example of that. And I found that to be true in my own life. The first 
year that I realized that I hadn't taken a vacation in a while, I thought, none of this. You know, I'm not running my own business, so I can never take a vacation. So I decided that year I would take six vacations. I didn't do that. I took seven, and my business grew. I anticipated it might take a step backwards, but it grew because people want to be inspired by people who are living their life. You've got to be out there living your life, um, spreading the light, being the joy. So here's the key piece here is that, you know, there are tons of programs out there. There are programs out there to teach you how to build a funnel, programs to teach you how to do a five-day challenge. Basically, there's probably, you know, a two-hour, four-week or, you know, eight-week or one-year program for just about anything that you could create in a business that is online or any other business, okay? So what happens, though, is sometimes you take those programs, you learn, you know, those little pieces, or maybe you take them and you don't actually do them or learn them, because what needs to happen is your own transformation. So you can have all the strategy in the world, but if you don't transform for your business and for yourself, all of that strategy is not going to bring you to where you want to be. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is um, let's look at something like pricing. So, you know, if if someone takes a class on pricing and learns how to price their packages or price their services or products in a way that is – you know, going to pay them enough in their business and also, you know, be at the right amount for respect because nobody wants, unless you're, you know, looking for, there's some things maybe where you want the cheapest thing, but most of the time people are not out there saying, give me your cheapest thing. People want something that's valuable. And so when people are looking in business and they're at their pricing, what happens is if they have not transformed, they'll have a really hard time, and I've had many discussions over the years in my business of helping people charge prices that really make sense, okay, and, you know, create a viable business model and also are a fair trade for what they're doing. And for the most part, most people are undercharging, and it's not just a decision of, oh, I'm going to double my prices or triple my prices because you have to transform to be able to do that. I've had people say to me, I can't even say my new price. So if they can't say their new price, what's happening is the transformation hasn't fully happened yet for them to step into that space of this is my price. So pricing is just one example of that. But, you know, throughout your business, there are many places of transformation. Transformation might be a transformation to be able to stand in front of an audience or be willing to be online, be willing to have a presence, be willing to be seen. And so that transformation is so important because anything else that you do is really like kind of putting a Band-Aid on wet skin, okay? It's not going to stick. It's not going to do anything. And we keep trying to do it. We keep trying to make it stick. So if you're going to work on one key piece, I would say take a look at your own personal transformation. And, um, And it's exciting. Transformation is exciting and it's scary and it's predictable. So you know that if you're feeling that really uncomfortable, um, you know, am I ready to do this kind of thing? You're right on the edge of being there. So I'm not saying force yourself through it, but just understanding, okay, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. I'm on this path. I'm transforming. I'm shifting into something else. And you can see transformation in your whole life, transformation from a baby that didn't walk and suddenly walks, transformation from a freshman college student to a college graduate, transformation from, you know, an entry-level person in the corporate world to somebody who 
you know, has been doing it for three, four or five years and has that confidence because they built up a track record. So there's transformation that happens in many areas in our life. And we forget that when we start a business and are growing a business or you've been in business for a while, to get beyond a plateau requires another transformation. And that's something that in my coaching practice and my work that I do with people, we focus on that and help you through that so that the other pieces seem actually pretty easy once you get through that. So some things that you can do to help your your personal energy are to practice high energy habits, and this will help you with your transformation as well. Get up early, journal, exercise, structure, have structure in your life, lots of self-care. And your mindset, you know, with your mindset, negative thoughts and energy pull constantly. Like you've probably walked into a room and walked right into a wall of negative energy. And so you're guarding your mindset and building your mindset and strengthening your mindset gives you, you know, that energy to shift your focus to a better mindset. So you can build a power mindset that will lift you up. So some key phrases to use to help you do that are to use words like I am and then something powerful, just start or see the end, make it fun, keep going, whatever whatever works for you. Sometimes um, I was on a hike and I wiped out like I, it was um, ice was on a hill and it had melted a little bit and I took a step and I tumbled quite a ways and I got to the bottom and I was kind of all bruised up, but I really couldn't turn around. It was like going forward was about the same distance to get back. And so I just kept saying to myself, one foot in front of the other. I mean, I wasn't going to just sit down and wait for somebody to rescue me. And I wasn't that hurt that I couldn't make it out, you know, of the hike. But that's an example of how a phrase, you know, keep going, one foot in front of the other, kept me going. And I just focused on that, and I focused on my breathing. So that's an example of mindset, you know, of controlling the emotions of, you know, my body hurts a little bit and I'm not sure if I can make it all the way through. So, yeah, transformation for success. Okay, so now that I got you all excited about transformation, there's a piece that comes before transformation, and that is commitment. And this is the place where you can be doing all the classes, all the work, But if you haven't made the commitment, that deep commitment to the change that you want, and you don't have that commitment to the willingness to shift and change, you aren't getting that transformation. So commitment can, for some people, can take years. And for other people, it's like, you know, one day they weren't committed, the next day they get get committed. And you see this with any kind of journey. You see this with a weight loss journey. You see it with a fitness journey. Um, You know, someone could know everything possible about nutrition and still not have the commitment to do anything about it. So what I want to encourage you right now is to take a look at any fear that you might have, any um, self-doubt, any wondering, can I really do this? Can I really achieve the goal that I want in my business and take a second here and ask whether you're willing to be committed to it. And if you can just step forward and say, you know what, I am tired of not having what I want and not doing what I want or um, making things work the way that I want to work. So I'm ready to be deeply committed to making X happen, whatever X is for you. So for some people in business, it's, you know, hitting a certain revenue dollar amount. It might be a certain number of clients or a certain number of sales in a month. It might be that you want, you know, a five-figure funnel, a six-figure funnel, a seven-figure funnel. It, It differs on the business. But there's something that you really are wanting and likely it's not just the business, it's your whole personal 
life. I mean, it's it's being able to relax at the beach and still have a thriving business. It's being able to enjoy your business. So whatever it is for you, just check in with yourself and and see, am I willing to be committed here? And if you're not willing to make that commitment yet, um, because, you know, what gets in the way of commitment? It's ego interference. You know, who do you think you are to have a goal this big? Or you can't do that. You're not strong enough. You don't know enough. You're not whatever. Okay, so that's what gets in the way of commitment. It could be things like, you know, it's going to be too hard. Or I really don't know. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people use the words I don't know in place of I'm not willing to learn. Or, you know, I saying I don't understand as I'm not willing to really listen and hear you. So it's just so easy to go, I don't understand or I don't know. So kind of check in and see, you know, if maybe you recognize that in yourself or your clients or your family members. But that's all, those are all examples of commitment issues. So. If you can seal the deal right now with yourself and step into that place of commitment, you are on the way to transforming your business. And if you're not there yet, it's okay too. And you can even journal, write in your journal, I'm I'm open to being committed or I'm willing to get to the place where I'm committed because, you know, you can't just say, okay, I'm committed and everything about you doesn't mean it. And then you're committed. No. I mean, I believe in choice, you know, that people can choose, but you have to actually be actively, deliberately choosing, not just saying the words I choose or I commit. So if you're not in that place yet, if you're just super comfortable where you are, that's okay too. And I encourage you to listen to the rest of the call here because, um, and the rest of the class here, because there might be something that helps boost you forward into commitment. And for those of you that feel really committed, great news. We're going to give you stuff to do and, and, you know, steps to take to really get through that transformation. And if you're working with clients and you're really hitting a wall with clients, um, it could be you need to revisit that commitment piece. If you work with clients and, you know, every week there's a goal and, that goal isn't getting done, um, go back to the commitment and recommit if you need to have your client recommit to whatever it is that they're working on. Or maybe they need to make a commitment to something different. Okay, so your environment. Environment wins over willpower. So you want to plan ahead to control your environment. Now, this means everything. It could be you know, you've heard the thing, put your shoes by the side of your bed and, and your workout clothes. So you get up and you um, just put your stuff on and take off out the door or sleep in your workout clothes so that you just have to get out of bed and get going. It's, you know, the laying things out. And as parents, lots of parents do that with their kids the night before, set out the clothes that they'll wear in the morning to, you know, help make the morning environment better and, you know, more seamless and calm. So do everything that you can to manage your environment, and your environment can be the height of your chair, the tilt of your laptop. It could be um, the lighting around you. It could be the sounds around you. There's so much in environment that we forget about. It could be clutter. So clear clutter both physically and mentally. Um, If you have a lot of mental clutter, do something called a data dump, which means you just Take every thought that's in your brain in the moment and you just get it all on paper. So the big fear with people who carry around a lot of mental clutter is they're afraid that they're going to forget something. So if you're that person, get it all down. Or even if you're not that person but you feel like you have a lot of mental clutter, get it all down and you'll feel instantly calmer. A pristine environment. So this is an environment that's clean, an environment that has minimal clutter, and everyone has different tolerance for clutter. Some people 
love lots of knickknacks. Some people love to be surrounded by their books and their papers. That doesn't mean you have to let go of that. But if you're a person where that gives you anxiety, take care of it. Let go of things. Okay, so this is a big thing when it comes to, um, you know, I, I think we throw the word hoarding around a little bit too easily. So when I say let go of things, I don't mean you're a hoarder, but I mean it's that Marie Kondo thing. Is it giving you joy? If it isn't, why do you still have it? And then also in your environment, create a culture of learning. Surround yourself with amazing people and surround yourself with inspiration. All right, let's move from your environment to your vision. So we talked about transformation, which is really about your own personal transformation. You need to personally transform to have a business transformation, okay? They need both. So the next piece is your vision. And your vision, ideally, you want to be thinking three to five years at least ahead, a lot of people feel that three years is kind of the sweet spot because it's enough out there where you can, you know, call it a vision, but it's close enough where three years feels kind of reachable. So three years might be your sweet spot, but become a bigger vision person. Get your mind away from just the... being consumed by the day. Now, I believe in living in the present moment and being mindful of the day, but you want to make sure that you have a big picture understanding of your life and where you want to go. So there's a vision for your personal life, a vision for your professional life and your business life, and sometimes families even like to create a vision that's, you know, family-oriented. But if you have a business with a team, I would do a personal vision and then also a team vision because those actually might be a little different. So you want to honor that as well. So in order to think about vision for business, you've got to answer the question, what am I really delivering? So when you think about, when you think about a business, um, one of my colleagues said something really brilliant on on one of her calls, she was talking, she's a business coach, and she said, really, when it comes down to it, yes, I'm teaching strategy, yes, I'm teaching, um, you know, I'm teaching things to know, but really what I'm teaching is abundance. So even though she is helping businesses grow, she's really helping people to the core, the backbone of her business is helping people to be abundant. So understanding that, I mean, that's big because um, when you say what do you deliver, someone might say um, widgets, some kind of widget. And even if you're making a widget, you know, whether it's a watch or clothing or anything like that, you're delivering something else. You're delivering the experience of it. Okay, so don't get tunnel vision on this. You know, really, really see the big picture. I know it said big picture, big picture, but what do you deliver? And then what difference does it make and what difference do you make? So why is that important? Another key piece when you look at your vision is to consider what lifestyle you want. And I actually like all of my business clients, or of course my life coaching clients as well, to focus on lifestyle as one of the beginning pieces because it's so tempting to say, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to create this business and think about, okay, how much money can I make? But when you think about your lifestyle, you think about this is the amount of money that I want to make. And what business model can I create then to make that? If you start in the reverse way with, you know, okay, I'm going to do this business and I think I can make this amount, 
you might not have a match up and you'll never have that feeling of things lining up. And then who do you want to work with? So important. You're a business owner. You get to pick who you want to work with. You get to pick what kind of client is um, the kind of client that you want to have experience with. You get to pick the kind of client that you target with your physical products that you sell. So who do you want to work with? Who is this person? So you might have heard this talked about as like a client avatar, um, an ideal client. I like to use optimal client. But you want to create a profile of this person and really get into the detail of who that person is. And I focus a lot on behavior. You know, like I and characteristics, like I like to work with people who are fun, people who have high integrity, high loyalty, people who are action takers. So all of that goes into my optimal client profile, not just, you know, um, age or gender or anything like that. It's really getting into the detail of the personality of the person. And why do you want to do that? It's because then when you're marketing, you're, actually talking to a specific person and it makes your marketing so much easier and you actually connect with those people who are meant to work with you. And look at your optimal client profile as a living document. So it will change and shift as you grow and change. Um, I mean, maybe in the beginning, your optimal client profile, now I hope you're not doing this right now, but in the beginning, just whoever will take you. You know, or whoever will buy from you. Um, and then you're going to hone that in. And as you hone it in, you're actually going to have more sales. Then let's look at attraction versus finding, a getting, or convincing. Um, that feeling of, oh, I've got to get clients, i got to find clients, i got to go out there and get them. It just sounds so exhausting, frankly. And... um like a lot of force energy, but when you're offering something amazing, and I know if you're on this call, yeah, for something that you're offering, but pretty much you have something that's pretty cool. What you, The way you want to look at it is you want to match up with all those people who also feel like that's pretty cool. Your job isn't to convince people that something is cool or to convince people who don't want what you have that they should buy it. Okay, and that's where people get hung up when they think, I don't like sales. It's because they think they're trying to convince people to buy something that they don't want. No, you're out there offering something incredible that your right people are going to want from you. And always speak in your optimal client's language. So don't get caught up in, you know, the correct marketing tone. Talk how your client will understand. That actually sentence didn't make any sense, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Speak your client's language. All right. So what difference do you make? We, we talked a little bit about this already. How are you helping? What solutions do you provide? How are you making the world a better place? So your optimal results, so we talk about optimal client, then your optimal results is where you can explain to somebody what you do. So an example of that would be, I work with business owners who struggle with making a difference and making a profit. I help them with a clear plan so they can relax into making money in their business. So you kind of fill in this blank. Who do you work with? What's their struggle? And sometimes the struggle is a big one. And sometimes the struggle, you know, might seem like not as big. Um, but there is a struggle. Otherwise, there isn't a, a result. You know, people don't hire you to do nothing for them, right? So this helps you really clearly explain what it is that you do. So you, people call it your elevator pitch. And, you know, I don't think I've said this particular statement that I just said to you in an elevator, 
Um, but it helps you get really clear and it helps you talk about what you do in a really clear way. And some people have their ultimate results statement right on their website. So, and if you have a business where you have multiple optimal results, if you can't condense it into one, you're really looking at, looking at it like you have multiple businesses, you know, or multiple channels and maybe you need an optimal result for each one. All right, so here's some things to think about when we said what lifestyle do you want? Freedom of schedule, freedom to live where you want. These are just giving you ideas. What are the externals? So the externals are the stuff you want. And your state of beingness is how you want to be in your day. And for me, this has become the most important. So I actually I love the money. I love to make money. But I measure the true success of my business by how much ease, joy, and flow I'm having each day. And if I'm not having that, I adjust so that I'm in that space because that's, you know, where I'm all blissed out with my business. <laughs> Here's like a really awesome lifestyle picture. Um, can you just picture yourself there? If you're listening just to the audio, it's a gorgeous um, beach sunset, luxurious. So, yeah. Let's all go there together. Okay, so let's move from vision to talking about intuition. Um, this is what protects you when you're out there reading 100 articles on marketing or you're out there seeing what class you want to take or going to webinars like this webinar. Your intuition helps you understand who are your right people and what information is the right information for you. And so what works for some one person might not work for somebody else. So how do you build your intuition? I promise all of you have it. Some of you might not feel like you hear it at all, but you build it by asking questions. So I like to write out a question or even just say a question before I go to bed at night. And it might be something like, what's my next step? Or, you know, what is the perfect introduction for a meeting that I'm going to have, you know, it could be something really specific. It might be something more vague, but it's asking a question and it's listening. So once you ask the question, you don't go, gosh, where's the answer? Where's the answer? I'm waiting for the answer. You just get quiet and you listen or you say, okay, ask the question. Something will come forward. And building your intuition also helps you avoid chasing shiny objects. So that means you know, where you feel like every time you read about the way someone closes their conversations with their prospective clients, you think, I'm going to do that. Or every time you see someone, you know, putting out some email templates, you're like, I'm getting those templates. Your intuition will help you hone in on what you really need. And also, I love taking courses. I love taking classes. I love learning from people. And I always find some kernel of truth or something inspiring from everything that I do. But the key here is don't make that question absolutely everything that you do in your business because your instincts, your intuition, you know, it's – to me, I, I feel like it's one of the most valuable, if not the most valuable part of who I am as a person because it's like a guiding system. And it's also asking yourself what feels in alignment. Like if you um, are talking to a prospective customer and they seem like everything checks the boxes, like they're the right person for you, but you just have this feeling of, mm, I don't really think so. It's something is out of alignment and your intuition is there protecting you and guiding you. And again, you strengthen it through practicing. All right, strategy. Everybody wants to talk about strategy. So part of your overall business strategy is going to be your skills. So that's what you bring to the table. Your heart, that's your passion. And we'll also say um, what you learn because there's 
where you are right now isn't going to be where you are a year from now because you're going to learn a bunch of stuff. And then there's your intuition, which we talked about. So all of those things combine to help you formulate your strategy. But let's talk about business plan. And sometimes people have that freak out because they think of things from, I mean, I have a master's in business and you think about things like executive summaries and um, all those sections, but really just everything on one sheet. You know, I like to encourage people to have a couple things on their sheet that are personal things, um, some directions, like a one sheet plan would be like a 12 month plan. Okay. Um, a three-year vision is going to be a lot more complex because you're going to look at the different pillars in your life and, you know, the different important pieces of your life and what you want to accomplish for each one of those. And I actually have a Living Your Vision course that is very reasonable. So if you want some help planning out a three- to five-year vision, um, let me know and I can give you the link to that course. Um but on this one sheet plan, you want it to be so that you can put it up on your bulletin board or have it in your notebook and you can look at it every day and ask yourself, am I on track for this? So you would have maybe business revenue goals, you'd have maybe product launch goals, um, marketing goals, but getting it just in one page, okay? Um, another piece of your strategy is how are you going to invest for growth? You know, are you creating a team around you? Are you um, are you getting a coach? Are you getting a mentor or several? Um, are you taking courses and learning and growing? Okay, that needs to be part of your strategy. Then the next part of strategy, and we're not covering everything in strategy, but these are the things that I get asked about the most in the areas where people feel, I think, super vulnerable is to market and you want to market to your entry points and to where your optimal clients hang out. So when I say market to your entry points, you, you know, typically aren't going to direct a Facebook ad to a $6,000 program. Okay. You're going to direct it to a webinar. You're going to direct it to a free report um, or maybe a conversation. So your marketing dollars that you spend and even your, um, organic marketing, your social media marketing, um, you're going to market to your entry points for the most part. Sometimes, I mean, I've had times where on LinkedIn and said, okay, I have one spot um, left for this course. Who wants it? And I've had people say, I do. So, I mean, it's not that you can't just blurt those things out, but for the most part, you want to market to your entry points. And then omnipresent marketing. So what is omnipresent marketing? It is marketing where you are literally everywhere. I don't mean you have to spread yourself out and be totally worn out, but you have a presence across all the main social media channels. And you have content marketing. You have videos. And the best compliment is when someone says to you, Hi, you know, I started researching business coaches and you're everywhere. Every time I went to a website or did a query, your name came up. Okay, that's omnipresent marketing. And you can do omnipresent marketing without spending a lot. You don't have to buy Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, et cetera. But it's good to have, you know, it's good to have that ad mix in there too. Um because it helps you get new people in a lot faster than typically, you know, just social media marketing. So omnipresent marketing. So let's say you have, you say, okay, I want to be omnipresent. So I'm going to be on YouTube. I'm going to be on all these different places. I'm going to be on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, um, Facebook. I think I said Facebook already. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to have your action the same across all of them. You want to have enough of a presence where it looks like, okay, this per like if you're if you're not an Instagram person but you have an Instagram profile, at least have enough pictures to fill up that first 
grid, you know, have nine pictures on it. Um, so, for example, in my social media marketing, I've had times where I've gone back and forth. Like when I first started, I was really big into Twitter, and it helped me be global right away. Now I keep going on Twitter, but I don't spend as much time on Twitter as I used to. I just sort of maintain it. And um, I love Instagram, even though I probably only have, I don't know, 3,000 followers or something. That's not too bad on Instagram. But I have really have fun with it. So it's kind of a fun thing for me. And then my Facebook business page, I have about 30,000 people following that page. And then I, of course, have a Facebook group and then Pinterest. Um, you know, I keep, I post my blog posts and I go through times where I'm more active on Pinterest, but that's like an area of opportunity for me. But when I look at it, I don't go, oh gosh, you know, I'm, my Pinterest is really falling way down. No, because I know where my people are coming from. And then LinkedIn, you know, I get a lot of bookings for um, strategy sessions through LinkedIn. Um, I mean, even if I post something about what I do and, hey, do you want to book a strategy session, people book from LinkedIn because I'm on there. I actually have someone help me with my LinkedIn to keep my presence up there, and I'm on there every day. And then I have some kind of promotional things. So because LinkedIn is a place where, you know, my people – hang out, you know, other business people. So so the key for omnipresent marketing is to have a presence, but then pick your ones that are your favorite, but also where your people hang out. That's why I have someone helping me with my LinkedIn, because I know my people are there, and I only have a certain amount of time. So I thought I need someone to help me have a more regular presence on LinkedIn. So um, also in your strategy, use powerful tools. Okay, so like Ad Espresso is a quick way to launch Facebook ads. It's way easier than dealing with the Facebook dashboard, and it's not very expensive. So um, Ad Espresso, it's a company by, I think it's founded by the Hootsuite people, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I've used them and really liked them. Otter AI is an app that transcribes. So if you do a podcast, audio, video, you can get your show notes using Otter. You can also use Trent, but Trent is like way more robust. So if you are doing just a ton, um, like TV stations use Trent. So Otter is cheaper for, um, for you. And I, for just transcribing a video or audio, I haven't noticed, um, like, a quality difference between Otter and Trent. And then there's Alitu, which is um, audio editing for podcasting. Wave is a cool – I'm giving you some podcasting tips here. Wave is a cool one for um, if you want to create – um, like on YouTube, YouTube is video, but if you want to have your podcast on YouTube, you can easily create a video with your podcast sound and it'll play the waves. And the cool, the reason I have it, because I could just do that myself, is um, the waves bounce along with the phrasing of your voice. So it's pretty cool. So it's a way to have your podcast on YouTube without having it be, if it's not a true video podcast. Okay. Um, virtual assistant help. You can use TaskBullet, Upworks. You can hire virtual assistant companies. Um, I have resources. Um, I have a page on my website called Resources for Business where you can find out some more information. And then Another key piece to your strategy is to create automation as much as you can. And we can't go into all the ways of creating automation, but the more you can automate things and the more you can have one thing do 10 things, like one um, Zoom recorded podcast episode becomes my audio podcast, becomes a YouTube, becomes an IGTV, becomes you know, a LinkedIn post becomes a blog post with the show notes. And, you know, 
one thing does a lot. So you want to have that focus for your business. And this is all ways to help you scale because um, you have to find ways to just maximize and optimize your time resources. Okay. So these things will help you do that. Um, I have one other thought that just jumped out at me. Um, Okay, so, you know, part of all of this automation, like funnels would fall under that and all of that good stuff as well. So some examples are, let's look at a strategy that would be, you know, for sales, right? So driving traffic to a webinar, to a consultation, to a high-end program, driving traffic to a report or ebook to a webinar to sales or consultation to a mid or high end program or package. For retail, driving traffic to a website with a coupon, maybe a loyalty program, a signature package, a subscription box, et cetera. And you want to always be upselling and downselling. And then evergreen versus launch. Um, I used to launch like maybe Six, seven years ago, I launched all the time. I mean, I don't mean every month, but every time I had a program, I would launch and I would have a start date and an end date. And then when I would offer it again, I would have a start date and end date. And now everything I do is evergreen, meaning that people can start my Inspire Group Mastermind anytime. I have a design that people can roll in and roll out. And my inner circle group is the same. People can roll in and roll out because I personally love the consistency that happens with that. But when you have an evergreen system, you still can launch. And some people who do evergreen, like rolling things in and rolling things out, will actually do a launch every quarter or twice a year just to keep the energy fresh. You know, so they'll do a launch just like it's a regular launch, but it's a launch for their evergreen program. All right. Now the magic sauce, what's the magic sauce? So um, one of my good friends, Michelle, came up with the term magic sauce and uh, I just love it. So this is when you think you are done then you do this. And that's when you put in that something extra, when you stretch a little bit, and then here's like my piece in there is the 40% rule. When you think you're done, you're really only 40% there. So um, so what does that look like? And thinking in terms of limitless possibilities. So that's part of the magic sauce. But that the way it looks like in real life is let's say, you're working on a blog post and you get all the way through and say, okay, I'm done. Well, the magic sauce means you go back over and read it again and maybe you add in some more links. You add in um, maybe some extra quotes, some extra images, things that just take it, take the pizzazz level up a little bit higher. And, you know, sometimes I like to go in for to older blog posts and do it too because you know sometimes when you look at something a couple weeks later or a month later you think of new things that you want to add anyway and google loves that by the way you know fresh content additions updates etc so um so when you're doing anything it doesn't have to be a blog post it could be an email that you're sending out to your list it could be um creating a sales conversation. It could be creating ad copy for your retail item that you're selling on your website, but always have that idea of extra. What extra am I going to put in there? And sometimes the extra is taking something out. Maybe you put in, made something too cluttered, and then you're going to pull something out and make it better by doing that. Right. 
So we've talked about our five major keys, and they're really, you could think of them as keys or pillars, but, um, you know, their transformation, vision, intuition, uh, mindset and mastery, omnipresent marketing, and the magic sauce. I think I said uh, mindset and transformation are really one key. <laughs> I just gave you six keys, but that's what we talked about here today. So when you look at, see, you don't have to be perfect. Um, when you look at those keys and then you can look at some measurables right now for your business, I just want you to close your eyes and just listen and think about where you're at with these items. So the amount of ease, flow, and joy in your life. Where are you at with that? You can even give yourself a number, 10, 1, 10 being off the charts ultimate result. This means your clarity on what you're offering to people, the solution that you're offering. Now, sometimes people say, oh, Sherry, this class is for people just starting in business. No, I go through these keys every single year and sometimes every quarter to make sure that I'm on track and that I'm paying attention to that and noticing if I've shifted anything and and things do need to shift, right? So, um, your optimal client, are you super clear on who that person is? Can you describe that person easily? Solid planning. So this means you have a 90-day plan, a 12-month plan, a three-year, three to five-year plan. You pay attention to what's going on each week, each day. You know, in that solid plan, you know what you're launching throughout this year or what your um, what your email calendar is or what your content calendar is for your blog, what your social media calendar will be. Give yourself a rating there. Incredible products. Do your products need to be upgraded? Do you need to make them better? Effective marketing. Now, nobody feels like they're effective at marketing, even all the marketing strategists and marketing managers, there's because it's kind of you get all these statistics, but it's still kind of unknowable at times and data helps. But so most people, when you say effective marketing, they're going to go, oh, gosh, you know, like a two or three. But you don't have to be that hard on yourself, but just notice if you feel like you could be better at marketing and notice the holes. You know, are you. Are all your clients, optimal clients on Instagram and you have a dismal presence on Instagram? Notice that. And what are you going to do about it? Effective operations, systems, and client care. So this is giving that seamless experience. Implementation. Do you do what you plan? Cash flow. People say cash flow is king. Is cash coming into your business? And are you making sales? Usually they go together, but sometimes you have sales, but your pricing is off, so your cash flow suffers. Or maybe your your receivables are out of line, like maybe you're too extended with your payment plans, et cetera. Okay, so just notice where you are with all of those measurables. And then here's what happens is ego comes in when you look at your measurables and you're like, oh, I have some stuff I have to fix. And then we go, I don't know if I can. So why do people fail? So here's why. I'm going to just address the main points. First is that our brains work to stay the same. I mean, that is proven fact that our brains like staying the same. And so they, our brains create scenarios that keep everything the same. Fear is another reason. And so fear is what actually prevents people from taking the action that they need to take and really would probably love taking. Plain old fear. The failure frame. And this is every one of us has a failure at some point in our life and maybe multiple. And usually the more successful you are, the more failures you've had. But um, people can fail because they identify too strongly, like, oh, I had a business 10 years ago and that failed, and so I'm just a failure. So notice if you're, 
if you're framing yourself yourself with failure, believing every feeling. This is a big one, you know, especially for intuitive people. If you feel like you're intuitive, you might go, oh, my intuition is telling me I shouldn't do this. We've got to recognize the difference between intuition and just plain old ego interference. And so the feelings and emotions that we have come and go. Like, you know, you could wake up and feel exhausted and not motivated and then someone says hey do you want to go to the Bahamas with me and all of a sudden you're thrilled and happy and excited and so what happened there you know nothing happened yet because you're not in the Bahamas but you just switched your feelings so anytime you have a feeling you can kind of challenge it a little bit and say do I really believe this is this really what I'm feeling or Yes, I'm having this feeling right now, but in 30 minutes, I'm going to check in again and see how I'm doing. Am I still in this feeling? Focusing on the past, okay? So the past can be good or bad for a lot of people. Focusing on the past is bad because they tend to remember mostly the bad things. And, uh, you know, like, oh, my parents never believed in me, or I had a bad teacher, or... I really struggled in school, you know, those kinds of things. And it's all in the past. It's almost like it just doesn't exist. It's not there anymore. So just notice, you know, don't beat yourself up, but notice, hey, am I bringing the past into every single conversation? Worrying about the future, okay? So we don't want to be focused in the past. We also don't want to worry about the future. We want to plan for the future, but we don't want to worry about it. And then decision-making. So people fail because a lot of times they just don't make a decision. So not making a decision is making a decision. So inaction is actually a decision that you make. So realize that you're always making decisions, even if the decision is just non-action. So become more deliberate about the decisions that you make. So these are all things that, you know, when I look at people that I've worked with over the years, that um, when people have failed, and, you know, every single person I've ever worked with has failed at something, um, even when we're working together, because not every single thing is going to work out perfectly. And I hate, actually, the word fail. I like to think of it in terms of lessons, but people have that, what if I fail? Well, so what? You'll just do it differently next time or you'll take what you've learned and you'll reshape and, you know, redo it. So we've just sort of kicked all of these reasons why people fail in the butt right now. And, um, and we're not, no one's going to be victim to any of that, right? All right. So I just want to spend a few minutes here talking about the Inspire Group, which is, oh my gosh, a group that I just am in love with. I've been doing a version of Inspire Group for six or seven years, and it's designed for scaling your business. You can click on the page and take a look at it. And this is really, it's okay if Inspire isn't for you because it's, it's a small group. I mean, it's a couple people roll in each month and a couple people finish. And so it's small. It's a small group. It's a group that gets close knit. It's a group that supports each other. It's a group that some of the people um, that are in it keep doing it. And they've been in the group for the whole time, just working on different projects, different aspects of their business, and sometimes completely different businesses. So Inspire is a spiritual and practical approach for business growth with a plan for scaling, making a bigger impact, creating magic, and manifesting miracles in your life. This program is about transformation in your business and life. It's about, um, it provides an intimate small group setting where you have access to intuitive coaching with me, business coaching with me, and deep connections with other people. So what's in it 
is there's 10 on-demand learning modules. So that means you can go through all 10 modules in a weekend. I don't know anyone who's done that, but you could. Um, and it really takes you through every piece in a deep level of what we've talked about today and more. Um, and then you'll have Q&A calls twice a month for a total of 12 calls. And this is where you get to bring your questions forward. You know, anything that's on your mind, you can talk about. You can talk about wins, you know, whatever. And then we have a private Facebook group where you can share what you're working on so that people can give you feedback. You can ask questions. And um, you get six or eight 30 minute one on one private coaching calls with me. And so um, that private coaching call is. Um, Um, that, I'm sorry, I thought I lost my recording. <laughs> I was going to be scared for a second there. Um, all right, so that, um, the private coaching calls, the reason it's six or eight is if you are full pay with Inspire Group, you get eight. And if you're doing the payment plan, you get six. So you get a bonus of two additional coaching calls with me. And a two-day virtual event on scaling your business, and that's, um, usually like a Friday night for a couple hours and then a Saturday for four hours with a break in between. It's kind of an intensive. So that's part of the program and then the private Facebook group. So here are the bonus gifts. A 12-month membership in my Optimal Client Attraction Mastery Inner Circle VIP program. And that's 24 live group calls. They're also recorded. There's a B-School for Online Marketing. It's an on-demand course that's included in it, a Facebook group, and then just plus a whole bunch of other stuff. You get the Spirit of Success on-demand e-course, the Master Your Biz Mindset on-demand e-course, and the Booking More Clients on-demand e-course. So there's a lot of bonus gifts included in Inspire Group. So you can get Inspire Group by going to the link and checking it out. And again, this is a small group. So don't worry if you go to it and you go, I'm not ready for this. Or if you if you go to it and you go, I am so ready for this. You'll just know it. You'll really know it. And um and the pricing is on the page. And sometimes when people visit the page and they're thinking about it, they need to have a conversation with me um, to talk a little bit about whether it's really for them or maybe to discuss even other options for coaching. So you can also book a get your results free 30 minute consultation with me. And um, the link is on the page here too. So if you're interested, We'll talk about scaling what you're already doing. We'll review or reveal your optimal client and optimal result. We'll take a look at marketing strategy for breaking through to mid five or six figure months. And you'll leave the consultation with action steps. And this will also be a time where you can ask questions about Inspire Group or private coaching. So if you're intrigued, but you're not yet ready to go, yes, I'm in for Inspire Group. Um, you know, book the consultation, or even if you feel like I'm in for an Inspire Group, but I have a few more questions for Sherry, go ahead and book the consultation. So I am just super excited about you transforming your business. And remember, it starts with commitment. So how committed are you to transforming you and your business and really breaking through to what you've wanted for maybe years? So I just appreciate all the time that we spent together here today. I love you. I am so proud of everything you've already done. So, um, again, you can take advantage of the consultation, the 30-minute consultation if you'd like. Or you can contact me if you have specific questions. 
So again, thank you so much. I love you. I'm sending you high energy vibes and blessings. You can visit me at SherryKhoff.com. Take care, everybody, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.